Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out a newly released all-in-one flight controller ESC combo from SpeedDB. This is the F405 40 amp all-in-one. And you guys know how much I like all-in-ones. Doing a quick unboxing, we actually have product literature this time. Hi there, my friend. It's great to see you again. So usually we get a QR code. This time around, we actually have an accordion style manual, which is perfect. We have a practice board so we can practice our soldering skills. We've got the all-in-one over there. Definitely a lot smaller than the old all-in-one from SpeedDB. We've got a back here. So if you do need to run 6S on the old school DJI Air unit, you can use that to drop down the battery voltage from here down to nine volts. We've got a breakout board for LED light strips and we've got a extension for a USB port. Next, we've got a QC pass label. That's good, quality is important. We've got two bags of accessories and I see they've actually labeled all of these. I don't think they used to do this, but XD30 capacitor connector for the DJI Air unit and then some shrink tubing and connectors for those breakout boards. And then finally, we've got screws, mounting hardware and so forth. Taking a closer look at the AIO, I don't have all the specifications. This has not officially released yet, but I can tell you it supports 326S LiPo. It's got your typical 25 by 25 mounting pattern. However, overall, this is quite a bit smaller than the old AIO, which was a bit oversized. It does unfortunately have a F405 IMU, which is a downgrade from the F7 of the prior stack. The gyro is an ICM 42688P, which I know there's a love-hate relationship with that, but my understanding is the specs of that gyro are quite good as long as the power delivery is clean. This also has a SPA006 barometer, which I've never heard of before, but it has it. On the back, we do have a connector for the DJI Air unit along with a, look at that, you have a USB-C cable connector here on the front, very good to see. And like any other SpeedDB product, it does support the SpeedDB Bluetooth app, that is what that antenna is over there. It does also have eight megabytes of onboard flash for black box recording. Eight megabytes is a bit small, but that seems to be the amount of space most companies are including now. This does have a five volt back built in. It does not have a nine volt or 12 volt. That is what that little extension board is for. This technically has six UARTs, but I suspect two of them will not be usable. One's gonna be for the Bluetooth app. And the other one I suspect will have the same unusability issues as the prior AIO from SpeedDB. The speed controller on here is BlueJ and they've actually labeled right here JH40. So that's great to see. It's a 40 amp speed controller. That's an upgrade from the prior generation and it supports 45 amps in a 10 second burst. So speed control wise is definitely beefed up. Unboxing this, I was quite happy and disappointed at the same time. Usually all-in-one controllers like this are supposed to be bare bones, small, lightweight packages. And here SpeedDB has gone ahead and added in all this purple bling, all these heat sinks, and, and you don't need it. The old version of this, which was rated at 35 amps, performed exceptional without the heat sink. Now, if I weigh this, it's supposed to come in at 13 grams. And yeah, there you go, 13, 14 grams. That's a lot of weight. I can run a separate stack for about the same weight. It's a shame that they've gone ahead and done this. And most likely I will attempt to remove this and see if that's possible. I've gone ahead and removed the heat sink from both sides of the flight controller. They were very easy to remove. Just heat them up and then use a propeller or a piece of plastic to pry them off. This is what we're left with. Let's do a weight check. 10 grams, so we've saved about three or four grams with the removal of the heat sink. We do have to figure out what to do with the antenna, but that's a problem for another day. I've gone ahead and installed the flight controller into my small Yeet 35 3.5 inch freestyle quad. This is the quad I had previously built with the old version of the SpeedDB AIO. And wow, this AIO fits so much better easier access to all the solder pads and so many ground VBAT, five volt pads, whatever you want, it's easily accessible through these points here. Ultimately, I came up with this orientation. It's not ideal. Usually I like to have my solder leads or my battery leads come out the front, 
But if I do that, I can't access the USB port. So a couple of compromises, but I came up with this. Do note that this arrow here is not pointing forward. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of configuration update to resolve that, but not a big deal. Let's go ahead and do the first power up. I'm hoping nothing got damaged in the removal of the heat sinks, but we will find out together. One, two, three, please don't blow up. Okay, that sounds promising. I see things flashing. I see things powered on. So far, we're in business. You're looking at the raw flight footage from the O3 air unit or the goggle recording. As always, my flight footage is unstabilized. I have the EIS turned off. I also did not use any stabilization software. This is the raw footage. So if there are any weird flight characteristics, any prop wash, any wobbles, all of those will be visible in the flight footage you're seeing. Prior to the flight test, I went ahead and I did my usual pit tuning and my filter tuning using pit toolbox. This is really no different than what I would do on a new quad build anyway. Having done the filter and pit tuning, this AIO flew really well. I did not notice any weird behavior, no weird prop wash. Everything performed just the way that I expected, which is great. Flying in a slow, smooth, and more cinematic fashion, you can see that the quad is very smooth. And remember, this is again, unstabilized footage. So if there were any kind of weird flight characteristics, you would be seeing those turning up on the flight footage. This really performed as expected. Towards the end of the day, we started to run out of daylight. So I wanted to push the quad more and more to really test the reliability of this new AIO. And remember, this AIO is rated at 40 amps, but that's 40 amps per ESC. So 40 times four is actually the rating of this ESC. And you can see I pushed here full throttle, sustained punch out, and I hit, what, 54 amps. Again, no issues here. I continue to be super impressed at how far SpeedyB is able to push this technology. This new F4 AIO is way more impressive and way more feature packed than the prior generation F7 AIO. And what's probably even more impressive is the price point. This F4 AIO comes in at $55 US, and that's just insane. The prior generation was more than double that price. And again, like I said, this has more features. I really love the fact that it has the USB port on there, but more importantly, the USB port actually powers up the AIO. The prior one did not do that. And even if that wasn't enough, this USB port will also power up your receiver. You know, it's little things like that, little creature comforts that just make this a way better package. One of the features that SpeedyBee is very well known for is the ability to wirelessly configure your flight controller out on the field. So here I have the app installed on my iPad. Let's go ahead and connect to the new F4 AIO. And we'll do this in real time just to see how quickly this process works. I'll click on skip. And we can see we have connected. Our CPU load is right there, 45%. Let's go into expert mode, and this will give us access to all the settings that we can do on the computer in the normal ESC, in a normal flight controller. So if I go under here, we can see my actual pit tune. So very easily, I can start to manipulate these sliders. I can even go under filter settings and start to modify individually all the filters here. So this is quite helpful and quite nifty. As good as this new F4 AIO is, there are some areas for improvement. The first one you've heard me already mentioned is the heatsink. To me, that makes this a very confused product. This is supposed to be small, lightweight, and compact. Well, they got the small and compact down, but the lightweight. You can see I removed the heatsink. You can do the same thing, but I really hope that SpeedyB provides a SKU that does not include a heatsink for maybe a couple of dollars cheaper. While setting this up, I also did notice a very small, and I mean very small, minuscule percent of motor error in beta flight. It was very, very small, less than 0.1%. I did not experience any issues in flight, and you can see from my flight footage, everything did seem okay, but I did wanna highlight that as part of the review. Otherwise, SpeedDB, well done. This is an amazing package at an amazing price. Just definitely looking forward to a skew without the heatsink. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.